Hello everyone, today we're here with our second tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be about connecting an API to your upgrade project. This time we're going to use an API from Rapid API, but you can use any kind of API. In this example, I'm using a phone validation API, and now you can see how it works. If we type the correct number, we get the check, otherwise we get a cross, so now we know what we're trying to achieve, let's start. First things first, if you decided to use an API from Rapid API, you need to create an account. This is the API that we're going to use for today. I'm going to link it in the description if you're interested to use the same one. It's also free. The first step is to check if the API works. Here you can add a valid number. And also here you choose the code of the country. So we can test it. As you can see, here is the results of a valid number. We have all this information. For our project, we can use these three variables to check if the number that the user inputs is a valid number. So we are starting in a new page in, in the composer. We can start by adding all the components we will need. The input field, the container with two icons and one spinner. And the button. We can style everything. The button, we can set it this style. And then for the icons, we can do it like this. Turn this one in green. And make it a check. And then turn this one in red and make it cross. Next we need to make uh, one change in uh, the input field in order to have the country code in the front of the input. We're in the component template editor and uh, we can add one of these fields and then we need to turn this into a horizontal and line everything. Now we can turn this to feed content and change it to the country code. Now we double click to get out of the editor and continuing we can label this one as phone number okay. next we can start uh, creating the page variables needed we need one page variable for the phone number we can name it number and we can turn it into a number type and then this one is about the visibility we can uh, call it uh, validation and this one needs to be a number two as for the phone number we can delete the initial value now we can go on to creating the data connection as you can see this one is from the example so we have to make a new resource 
and it will be a REST API directed regression. You can go on and call it form validation. Now we need to get the information needed. We're going to copy the URL of the API and add it here. Next, we're going to go to get record. We don't need this. We're going to need to create um, the query parameters. The first one is number. And we can paste it in the label and in the key. The number is not a static value, so we have to turn this off. And also it's not optional. Next, we take the country. In my case, I'm going to create the country as a static value, but you might need to have multiple countries. And so this will be a variable too. And last, we're going to need to copy the headers. This one we don't need. And this one is the second header. Both of these values are static. In your case, you're going to pay, copy and paste these values in uh, each one respectively. So I'm going to do that. And then we are ready to go on and make a test request to see if, if, if everything works fine. I'm going to write down an example number. It should uh, return a valid number. Okay, as you can see, here is the response. The next thing we need to do is set the schema from the response. So here we are. This is the schema from the response. So AppGyver knows what values you get in the response and this will make the next steps easier as you will see. Now what we need to do is actually making the necessary logic to the button. So when pressed, we get the API call and then set these icons according to the response. First things first, we should uh, get the get record logic. We're going to connect it with the one we just made. And here is the value of the phone number. Now we need to have a formula that it's going to add the country code because if you remember in the input field we just have uh, the phone number without the country code so to do that we're going to use this formula next we need to have uh, a message for when the get record has failed. Most of the time this will happen because of the input being empty. Of course you can uh, play around and uh, have different messages for different situations. So if the get record call is valid we need to check 
if uh, the number is uh, valid in the response we need to have the formula here that will check if uh, the response has a valid number so we can use now we can go to the outputs and here as you can see here is the mapped uh, response from when we set the schema in the data connection i'm going to choose this one so if this output is true output true or if it's false, I'll put false. Everything is okay. So now we need to go back to the icons and set their visibility with a, a different formula for its time. So for this one, we can go on and use So if validation is zero, I'll put true, or if it's not zero, I'll put false. May me copy this formula. Then we're going to go to this icon and say if the validation variable is 1, output true, otherwise false. And for the spinner, we're going to have this formula. If validation number is 3, output true, otherwise false. Now we can go back to the button and uh, make our set page variable. We need to set the validation number. So if the number that the user has inputted comes from the API as valid, we need to show the check icon. So that icon is one. If it's not valid, we need to show the red cross and that is zero. And if the uh, user hasn't inputted any value we also need to show the red cross now the last uh, thing to do is to use uh, the page variable to display the spinner from the time the user has tapped the button until we have the result we can do that by connecting the set validation to 3. That means that when the user taps to the button, we show the spinner, then we have to uh, make the request, the API request, and uh, depending on the result, we show the right icon. So now we can uh, change here the name to new so we can distinguish it from the previous one and um, let's save it and go on to test it so as you can see we are in the new page that we just made one thing we forgot is to change the keyboard type to number pad so it's more convenient for the user to We can uh, test our work with uh, a number, let's say This one is a valid number, Grace So we get an error 
so let me debug this and I will come back okay so that was an easy and a stupid mistake because I forgot to bind the page variable of the phone number with the input field so we can do that right now and then save so if we go on to test once again I can input a valid number and as you can see everything works fine if I delete one character then it's false so everything was fine I hope you like this video I hope it's helpful be sure to leave any feedback in the comments down below and uh, see you in the next video